This is a demonstration of a high range chlorine drop count test kit using endpoint ID procedures. The first step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to collect an accurate sample. The smallest change in sample size will lead to inaccurate results. Before collecting your sample, it's important to rinse the vial three times with the sample to be tested. This minimizes the chance of contamination from a previous titration. To get an accurate sample, hold the vial close to eye level. Accuracy is very important during this step. Once you feel you have an accurate sample, place the vial on a level surface and bend down to eye level to verify. When performing a drop count titration, a white background can provide contrast to better see the color changes. A cabinet tray or a white paper towel can provide that contrast. The next step is to choose your sample size based on your desired drop equivalency. Once you have collected an accurate sample, the next step is to add 20 drops of potassium iodide 50%. The bottle contains a dropper tip, so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each reagent, swirl the vial 5 seconds to make sure the reagents are properly mixed. The next step is to add 3 drops of sulfuric acid 50%. Remember to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each reagent, swirl the vial 5 seconds to make sure the reagents are properly mixed. The sample will turn yellow or brown if chlorine is present. The next step is to perform the first titration using thiosulfate DT. Each bottle of titrant is labeled with the equivalency and sample size it was manufactured for. It's important to make sure you have the proper titrant and the proper sample size for this titration. The bottle contains a dropper tip, so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each drop of titrant, swirl the vial to make sure the sample is properly mixed. Count the number of drops during this step. The titration is complete when the sample turns a pale yellow color. Write down the number of drops used. You will need this number to calculate your results at the end. The next step is to add 5 drops of starch indicator solution 1%. Hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each reagent, swirl the vial 5 seconds to make sure the reagents are properly mixed. The sample should turn dark blue. The next step is to perform the second titration using thiosulfate DT. It's important to make sure you have the proper titrant and the proper sample size for this titration. Remember to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each drop of titrant, swirl the vial to make sure the sample is properly mixed. Count the number of drops during this step. The titration is complete when the sample turns colorless. Add the number of drops from this titration to the number of drops from the first titration. Multiply the total number of drops by your chosen equivalency factor to determine the parts per million total chlorine. 